Hey there, Omaha. Welcome into another episode of Restaurant Hoppin'. I'm your host, Dan Hoppin', and it kind of goes without saying, but I really enjoy going out to eat and experiencing the wide array of cuisine that Omaha has to offer. Unfortunately, this is not a very healthy hobby. Um, as much as I love going out to eat, most of these dishes are packed with fat and calories and salt, so I try and space out my gluttonous meals a little bit. But then I heard that there was this new restaurant opening downtown that was not only going to offer delicious meals, but it was going to focus on offering health-conscious plates. And I was 100% sold, and I'm happy to report that it delivers not only on the healthy side, but also on the flavor. That is Untamed Kitchen, and today I have the founder and CEO of this wonderful restaurant on the podcast, Alex Harrington. Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Dan. Really appreciate it. Um, Untamed Kitchens, uh, like you said, it's a health and wellness focused brand, um, fast, casual type brand. Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a process, uh, you know, years in the making, honestly, I've been thinking about Untamed Kitchen and having a restaurant that is uh, better for you. Um, it's truly better for you, right? Like, you know, all the way across the board from starting with no seed oils is one of the biggest things, but, um, yeah, it's been years in the making. It's been, it's been awesome. We're going to get into the background. We're going to get into the seed oils. We'll touch on all that. Yeah. But first, I, I, I want to just kind of, kind of provide just an overarching understanding of what Untamed Kitchen is. And I think you had a social media post in February that almost summed it up perfectly. Okay. It read, fast, easy, healthy, need we, need we say more? The only thing I'd add to that is the word delicious. Yeah. How do you describe the concept of untamed kitchen to someone who's hearing about it for the first time. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, <clears throat> untamed kitchens, you know, like you said, it is healthy. It's fast. Um, what is it? It's approachable, I think as well. Um, a lot of times people feel like healthy food might be, um, you know, they're, you know, scary or, you know, not delicious, but I think the focus is how do we make healthier food delicious? Um, and approachable. So, uh, you can go into untamed kitchen and get a, a bowl or a salad or a wrap and, uh, everything on the menu tastes unbelievable. Um, you know, it's all fresh, all like a lot of local ingredients, um, you know, really sourced, uh, sustainably. What defines healthy food in your eyes? Because I think a lot of people will look at calories. Maybe they'll look at fat content. Maybe they'll look at salt, but I, you know, it goes it goes deeper than that. It goes into ingredients, where you're sourcing from things as well. As you're building the menu at Untamed Kitchen, how did you define this is healthy food to us? For sure, yeah. Uh, healthy food for us, it starts with ingredients. It's all whole food ingredients, right? So it's like we take one food item, broccoli or steak, or you know, one t- one item. How do we make that as simple and as uh, you know as good as we can possibly make it? So. Um, for example, like, like broccoli, it's, you know, how do you, how can you cook broccoli the best? We just simply roast it with a little bit of salt and pepper, um, you know, with olive oil. Um, so yeah, I think just taking those whole ingredients, what ingredients do we want in our restaurant? We invite those ingredients in say, what can we do with all of these things? Um, and then we build a, re- a menu around that. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions people have around healthy food? Um, Yeah, I think, you know, perhaps people don't know how to cook healthy food. Um, You know, something I certainly had to learn over the course of the years, right? Um, Healthy food can taste really good. And I think when you have real ingredients, the simpler you cook them, the better. So we simply, you know, we simply roast we roast almost everything in our, in our kitchen. Um, yeah, we roast it in an oven, uh, or we sear it on a flat top. Um, you know, that when you have healthy, real ingredients, you don't really have to do a lot with them. Um, so that's kind of where we've been focused, you know, from, from the get go, from, you know, the moment I started cooking these things in my uh, home kitchen five years ago. When you say real ingredients, what do you mean by that? Um, single, uh, yeah, a real ingredient simply is just something not out of a box, right? So it's uh, an ingredient that you buy, you know, straight off the farm. Like, you know, one tomato, one broccoli. Um, real ingredients, just a, a single, uh, single ingredient item. 
Okay. Yeah. So if anybody's listening to this and they're like, dang, this sounds pretty good. I want to check yeah. this out. Untamed Kitchen is located downtown at the corner of 14th and Farnham. You can stop in. You can order at the counter. There are kiosks inside as well. Or you can order online. You can just stop in, grab your food like straight from a little stand, and you're out in 10 seconds. It's pretty impressive. Yep. And I want to mention as well, Alex, you also own the Pickleman's Gourmet Sandwiches yep. in, in Omaha as well. Mm-hmm. That's not what we're here to talk about today, but it just makes your profile yep. all the more impressive. So getting back into the healthy side of things, usually when you have to, you have to choose between health and flavor, the scale tips in one direction. You're sacrificing one for the other. But I think at Untamed, you believe that that balance can be 50-50. What are some of the ways that you make healthy food that people don't normally associate with deliciousness taste so good? You mentioned, you know, roasting it, grilling it. What are some other ways? Like broccoli, for instance. Most Mm -hmm. people hear the term broccoli and they're like, I don't want, like broccoli is something I'll force down if I have to. Right, for sure. But how do you take elements like that and say, let's ramp up the flavor a little bit Mm -hmm. on this and make it pop? Yeah. Um, yeah, at Untamed, we take all of these single ingredient items, right? And we combine them, uh, you know, some in sometimes unusual ways. So we even have like blackberries in one of our hot bowls. Uh, but it all comes together really well. Um, and then we end the process with putting a sauce, a homemade sauce, um, and a healthy sauce on the bowl uh, or on the wrap or the salad um, <clears throat> at the end of the process. So, um yeah, taking these single ingredient items and putting them all together um, so they really mesh and then putting a sauce on the top at the end, um, it just it brings it all together and brings the flavor out in each single item um, as well as bringing it out together in, in, a, in, a, in one single bowl for sure. I think maybe the best example of this is your fried rice mm. because that's something, I mean, fried rice is absolutely delicious. Don't for get sure, me wrong. Yeah. But if you're ordering fried rice at a restaurant, that is like one of the biggest health no-nos you're going to have. I mean, that is a gut bomb that is just packed with fat and calories, even before you even add any protein to it. salt, too. Yes, salt as well. Too salty, yeah. It is just, it's a diet killer. Yeah. Yours is not like that. It still has the flavor of fried rice, Mm -hmm. but it feels light. It feels refreshing almost. Mm-hmm. How did you create that dish? How How is that dish different than the traditional fried rice that people come to expect from mm-hmm. their Chinese takeout? Yeah, you know, people make fried rice at home with like, you know, day-old rice or older rice a lot of times. Uh, we use our fried, we combine all three of our rices, our grains together. We use white rice, brown rice, and quinoa, uh, which is, you know, packed full of healthy nutrients, including protein. Um, and then we have farm fresh eggs that we mix in with, you know, instead of soy sauce, we use coconut aminos. Um, you know, then we add on top of our fried rice bowl is, you know, healthy single ingredient vegetables, um, you know, such as mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms, uh, pineapple we put on there. So we have a definitely a different twist and a more uplifting, uh, fresh twist to fried rice bowl for sure. It's way healthier. Like I love a classic fried rice as well. Um, you know, fried rice is like my kids love fried rice. I love it. Uh, the goal with untamed kitchen is how do we make approachable food that people know about already, like fried rice or like a Buffalo chicken wrap, right? Um, how do we make it approachable, but healthier than what they're used to, but they don't even realize it's healthier than what they're used to. It it tastes great still. Yeah. The, the BLT salad would be another great one. Uh, yeah. Like you said, the Buffalo chicken, I mean, normally, Buffalo sauce is filled with butter and all right. kinds of salt. But you're transforming these ideas that people have about things that aren't necessarily healthy, and yet you're transforming them and presenting them in a little bit different, like, package almost. For was, sure. was that the concept? As, as you were coming up with what the menu is going to look like at Untamed, was it like, was that what you were trying to do? Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's about taking the... Um, you know, so I, I, like you said, I've been in restaurants for uh, my entire career. I, I've never had another job outside of college um, that hasn't been a restaurant job. So 
Um, it's about taking what people know, making it way, way healthier and, you know, hopefully better. So, um, it's about putting all the ingredients together, um, you know, sourcing the ingredients better. Uh, like for the BLT salad, we source our bacon from John's Naturals, for example. Um, our steak, we have a chimichurri steak salad. You can put steak on anything. Um, our steak is grass-fed, grass-finished, and from Nebraska, um, which is, you know, unusual and very unique for a fast, essentially a fast food restaurant, right? Um, so we're sourcing ingredients that are, you know, so elevated for what we're actually doing. Um, you know, I think, I think that's like, that's the start of it. It's like we chose from the beginning, we're going to do, this is our plan. We're going to have sustainable food. We're going to, we're going to live by these, um, examples and we're just going to stick to it. Every time we you know make a decision, it has to follow the principles that we're, that we believe in. I love that you brought up John's Naturals because I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, your proteins source from the pork comes from John's Naturals, chicken, Redburn Farms, and I believe the the beef and the steak comes from uh, Nyman's Ranch. Yep. I mean, when, when you're talking about having real food and you're needing, because you're not adding a bunch of extra salt and fat and everything, you need these proteins to, the flavor of the actual protein needs to stand out without sure. a bunch of additives and everything. Mm-hmm. What was it about those farms and those ranchers as you're, you know, going through all your options that made you say, this is where we're getting our protein? Yeah, for sure. Um, Yeah, to be honest, we looked at multiple local, um, you know, local sources for everything, right? So um, with the proteins, for example, uh, Redbird Farms is out of Colorado. So it's not Nebraska, it's not Iowa, but it's close. Um, And they have enough that they can actually source us. Right. So we, we needed something to be, well, we can order, you know, pounds and pounds and pounds of this every single week. Um, same with the Nyman ranch. Uh, it's out of Nebraska. It's, um, you know, the flavor's great. We tasted, you know, I've had a ton of steak, you know, trying tons of steak, right. Um, almost all of it tasted great. You know, then I look at the, like the flavor profiles there, uh, with ours, um, you know, then it just, then you go back to the principles, it checks every box, it's single sourced, um, you know, some of the big food houses that, you know, we buy our food from, you know, they want to put you into a product that's, you know, pre-cooked or one of these, you know, other, you know, simpler, easier for us to manage kind of deals, but, um, it doesn't go with the principles. So we went with Nyman Ranch. It's, uh, locally sourced, you know, we're actually this summer we're planning to go to the farm where it's the ranch where it's at. So, um, hopefully, putting a video shoot together for that. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, I want to get back into the development of the menu because I I find it really interesting. If you go through each menu item, whether it's a salad or a bowl, and, and any salad or bowl can be ordered as a wrap as well. Right. But you kind of start to see the same formula, and that there's there's a protein or you can add a protein right. there's vegetables sauce and dressing mm-hmm. nuts and seeds and fruit and maybe a cheese mm-hmm. that like that's a lot of components to balance but you see everything in it like the nuts add crunch the fruits usually add some sweetness or some tartness the sauce you know brings in kind of that finishing flavor profile was that a formula that you established as you were building the menu or did it just kind of happenstance that you found yourself gravitating to adding these same things every time? Uh, that's a great question. No, I mean, the menu, you know, like I said, I started this with an idea five years ago. Um, you know, I've t- tested the menu hundreds of times, and this is kind of where we landed. Um, it, it comes back to the principles again. It's like, where do you want to be? It's like, on our salads, we don't have croutons. Um, we have nuts that provide a crunch. Um, you know, the broccoli is kind of crunchy. Like there, there's other things that provide what a crouton could provide, but what's better for your health, you know, a nut or a seed, like, you know, pumpkin seeds, for example, or, um, cashews. Um, and we roast all of our, our nuts as well. So, um, those are all unique to untamed kitchen in that way as well. So, um, yeah, as far as developing the menu goes, 
it kind of just morphed into like what what else would fit this flavor profile what would provide better nutrients you know what would round out the bowl health wise and taste wise so it it all has to kind of come together um health and taste wise it's not like what tastes it's not what tastes the best well we could add you know french fries to it or whatever right so it's like what would be good well french fries are good you know but are they healthy enough uh we have sweet potatoes in our restaurant um you know, so we're considering doing something more with sweet potatoes, like a side dish, um, so people can still get that potato kind of flavor, right? Um, but right now, um, you know, it just has every single thing we do has to check the the right box. So, you mentioned no seed oils off the top. What what's wrong with seed oils? Uh, yeah, seed oils. Um, it's kind of a hot button topic right now, um, but. In my house, for example, um, you know, at home when I cook, I've always cooked with, um, I've always cooked with olive oil or avocado oil, um, seed oils, you know, I think the gist of seed oils, right. is like, it provide, it puts inflammation, like it creates inflammation in your body. Um, you know, anytime you're eating food, different foods, you know, would, would spark inflammation in your body. So it's like, um, you know in your body, you want lower inflammation. And, and sometimes maybe, you know, depending on what it is, like higher inflammation might be good. Not, not from foods though. Um, but you know, you want your body to be as, um, you know, as I don't know the word Zen as possible. Right. So it's like, you know, you want to put things in your body that are good for you. Um, that don't, you know, create high inflammation or don't, you know, create any other, you know, bad health, um, you know, I don't even know the word, right? So it's like, like side effects. Yeah. Bad health side effects or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, when we created untamed kitchen, it had to check all these boxes. And, you know, one thing we have had to really work on with untamed kitchen is, you know, educating the, the consumer. Right. So it's like the first question the past like four months when we've been open is like, what is it? What can I get there? Is it taste good? It was healthy. Is that, is it okay though? Should I try it? So it's like, Oh, we, you, you can try it. And like, I always joke, it's like, we're kind of like Costco. It's like, if you don't like it, we'll keep redefining what it is that you want as a consumer. So like uh, two weeks ago, for example, um, we went off script a little bit. So we opened up with salads, bowls, anything can be put into a wrap and we have smoothies and we have our beverages, for example, are all curated by me and we, uh, they're all healthy. So there's healthy soda, there's healthy, you know, waters and, and these sorts of things. But we went off script and did a build your own. So now you can build your own wrap bowl or salad. So that'd be like the new thing that we just came out with. Um, so if you want a simpler item, you know, you have a dietary restriction and we're very diet friendly. We don't have, you know, we, we don't have any, you know, dairy in our restaurant except for a couple of cheeses. Right. So, um, uh, we're really protein focused though. Like we want we push like eating more protein, but now you can uh, do a build your own option. So people say like, what is it like? What is untamed? Like untamed is like Chipotle. Um, it, you can build your own burrito at untamed kitchen. It's not going to be Mexican flavored. Um, it can be whatever flavor you want um, that we offer. Right. So, but that's what I would associate it with. We, we came up with the build your own for the people that want to have more freedom of choice. And what was that customer education like? I mean, obviously, Untamed is still a new concept, so I'm sure you're still having to explain it to people. But especially during those first couple months that you're open, I mean, you are on the corner. It's a big restaurant right in the middle of downtown. I mean, it's something that is going to catch people's eyes. I'm assuming there are a lot of people that walked by and were just like, what's this? And walked in, and they're talking to you, and they're just like, "What? what is this place? How do you educate them on this is familiar food to you, but it's also something different, right? Uh, yeah, it's a, as the owner, it's about being there, you know? So it's like, I have to be there. There's no other way around it. You can't start a restaurant and not be there. So like I'm there a lot, right? Um, I have eight other restaurants as well, but I'm there a lot. Um, and then it's about educating them. They ask like, what should I try? What do you normally like? It's like, you know, I like buffalo wings. Okay, well, let's try the buffalo chicken bowl then. Um, so it's it's about really kind of 
finding their entry level. Um, you know, they don't know what oyster mushrooms are. Well, they're like, they're mushrooms. They're just a little different than, you know, the mushrooms you normally eat maybe. Um, so it's about going on the, it's about bringing them on the journey. Um, it's about, you know, we want to be community oriented. So it's like, how can we invite customers, invite the people in and sent, like bring them on our journey with us on like whatever health, you know, wherever they're at on their health journey. Right. So it's like, if they've never tasted broccoli before, you can come try it here. You know, we'll, we'll guide you down the path to hopefully get people to realize like all these foods taste really good. Um, but it, a lot of times it's about starting them with fried rice. You know, it's like, oh, well, we'll be the entry level. Eh, it's like a Chinese fried rice kind of, but just try it, you know, see if you like it. And, you know, I, I think that's one of our most popular bowls. So um, that and the buffalo chicken. But, um, yeah, so it's really just about getting them to take the first step on the journey to, like, being with it, like, inviting them into our, our community. Alex, you could not have segued more beautifully into what I wanted to talk yeah. about next. And that is the word community. Because you have a line on your website that says, we're trying to build a community around healthy, real food. That's uncommon. I think most restaurants, they want to serve great food. They want to make a profit. I don't think most restaurants have a goal of creating a community. I mean, mm. if, yeah, if people come into the restaurant and they, you know, form friendships or they, or they find common ground, great. But that's not the goal. Yeah. Why is it Untamed Kitchen's goal to create a community? What community are you trying to create? Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, really, it starts with, um, you know, for me, going back to high school. Uh, I, in high school, I did triathlons and, you know, ran ultra marathons and You're a wild um, man. it's about like, for me, it was always about like testing, um, testing the, the boundaries and the limits and seeing how far we could go. Um, you know, actually go mileage wise, but like in your mind, right. All these things are mental challenges. Um, so it's about creating a community. Untamed kitchen is like, I have been looking for a community, um, of like healthier minded people. It doesn't mean, you know, the healthiest people in the world. It's just people that make choices, you know, as often as they can to eat a healthier, one healthier meal per week, you know? So it's like, I've been looking for this community to, um, you know, hang, I want to hang out with people that are thinking about longevity, um, you know, living longer. Um, how do we find those people? So I, I created a restaurant of a place. This is a place where I want to eat at. Um, and my goal is that other people want to eat there too. Is it for profit? It's a for profit business, but you know, anybody around me would know this. Like I'm not doing this to make a bunch of money on a restaurant at 15th and Farnham in downtown Omaha. I'm doing it to build a community of people that I want to be around. Um, and I think other people like our, some of our teammates, for example, that are on the untamed team they want to be around them too. You know, it's runners or crossfitters or someone that, you know, just walks every day. Um, all those people like, you know, that live or work in downtown Omaha come into untamed now, um, which has been amazing to see. It's, um, anytime you're building a community, it's, we, we joke, it's literally one bowl at a time, right? Getting someone to come in and having a salad or a bowl, one bowl at a time. We see them a second time. Hey, you're back. This is amazing. Like, they don't, like any restaurant owner would, you know, would feel right. You, you get a repeat business. That's, that's where it's at. We're doing it with community in mind. Um, and we're supporting other, you know, our customers by sponsoring a race entry fee, for example. Um, you know, we're doing that for a few runners. Um, you know, it can be as simple as a 5k, um, or a marathon. It doesn't matter. Right. So, um, we're open to all these types of things. We just want people to feel like they have a place to go um, when they're trying to eat healthier, when their doctor's telling them, hey, eat healthier. Um, just try one healthier meal a week. That can change your life. I mean, one healthier meal a week can change your life. So, And you guys have done things like you've hosted yoga classes or, you know, you mentioned sponsoring runners. Like it's not just here, have a healthy wrap or a salad, but it's 
let's figure out what this healthier lifestyle journey might look like for you. And you're bringing people together. And I mean, what better way to create community than around the table? Like that's, yeah. that's where, people that's where it's meet. at. It's the dinner table, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, for us, it's the dinner table for us. It's a lunch table. Um, yeah, we've hosted a yoga class, you know, it was totally free. Um, you know, we're thinking about doing some other very interesting things this summer when it's hot out, such as, um, cold plunges. I don't know if, if, if you've oh ever boy. tried a cold plunge. I've not, and I have no interest in doing it's, it, but it, I, I understand why people do it. it. I know it it's changes you. your life. It'll change How? your life. How so? You will get out of the water, this ice cold freezing water, and you will feel so alive. It will change your life. Guaranteed. I got my wife to do it, and she does not like cold. Okay, I might have to. She try wears this a, then. you know, she wears a, you know, down Canada goose, you know, jacket when it's forty degrees outside. So it's like, it it would change your life. You just have to try it. What does it feel like? Like when you say it'll change your life, I mean that this has it's to invigorating. Be just it's like it's feeling. so invigorating when you get out of the water. You, I don't know that. That's how I feel. It change like. When I started doing cold plunges, I have one at my house. Um, I have an ice barrel at my house. Um, the first 20 seconds are extremely scary. And, you know, but once you get out of it, um, yeah, it, it it's like overwhelming, I think, you know. Okay. It's it's wild. Okay. This summer, I'll you, come down you to the untamed kitchen. I'll take an ice plunge and then I'll, as I'm shivering cold, I'll reward myself with a Buffalo bowl and yeah, exactly. <laughs> it'll all be worth exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. So I, I want to go back to the, to the origin story of untamed kitchen. And I think, you know, that goes back to what you mentioned in high school, you were already at that stage running triathlons, running ultra marathons. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, you know, you, you're just a very active person. How did this healthy lifestyle and exercise, eating clean, how did all of this become something that really interested you? Um, yeah, my health journey started, like I said, in high school, um, really with endurance events. Uh, I flew out to uh, Vermont in college. I skipped the fraternity spring break, um, flew to Vermont and did a snowshoe marathon. A snowshoe marathon. Yeah, I'd never been on snowshoes before, so I heard it this. was. Uh, uh, so it all started with like my swim coach in high school. This guy was an endurance, you know, junkie. Like he did Deca Ironmans and all these like five Ironmans in a row kind of deal. Um, but so I flew out to uh, to Vermont to uh, this guy named Joe DeSena. He's the founder of Spartan Race. I, f I flew out there in college to do a snowshoe race. Um, I'd never been on snowshoes before. So it's just about taking challenges. I had to go from racer to racer to ask them if they had a backup pair of snowshoes that I could borrow because I didn't have snowshoes. I'm, you know, I went, I'm from Illinois. I went to school at the University of Iowa, never been on snowshoes, didn't know how to use them, no clue. Um, so I just went, went around and some guy had an extra pair. He's like, ah, you can try them. They're not the best, but they're my backup pair, but you can, you can have them for the day if you want. Um, so yeah, they went up and down a mountain for like, you know, I don't know, was it eight or nine hours or something in the middle of March in Vermont? Um, met some really interesting people, incredible people, like people from all over the world, um, you know, hung out with billionaires and, you know, your local police officer. Like it was a, all walks of life at these types of races, right? Um, and it just teaches you a lot about who you are and, and, you know, what you can do. So I, I always say like entrepreneurship is like your business, you know, businesses fail, right? But sometimes you quit before the business, you know, how could you keep going? And every entrepreneurship is like every day. Um, it's almost like taking a loss every day. Every, there's so many losses in entrepreneurship and eventually you get a little win, like a day, one day you might be, oh, wow, we had better sales today. Or, oh, wow, we had, we got a new employee and he or she seems really awesome. And do you have hope? Um, like Untamed Kitchen's going great. Pickleman's is going great. Um, but on, like entrepreneurship and business ownership is so hard. Um, I 
don't think I'd have as much grit within un, within business ownership if I didn't test myself earlier in life with endurance events. Um, you know, that rolled into CrossFit and, you know, some other, you know, other things like that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, I don't even know why I enjoyed it. Right. It's like being on a bike for four hours. It sounds crazy, but I don't do it anymore. To be honest, I, I still run and, and work out and live a healthy life as much as I can. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's about finding yourself and finding like what your limitations are. And, you know, a lot of people don't ever find that. Um, but I encourage people to try. That was such a wise, inspiring answer. I want to dig more into it. But first, I just need to know, how does, what inspires a, a college student, nonetheless, who doesn't own snowshoes to travel halfway across the country to enter a snowshoe marathon, which is not something I even knew existed until three minutes ago? What, yeah. what's, the, like, what's the story behind that? Um, yeah, it comes back to my high school uh, swim coach, right? So this guy was, uh, his name's Andy Weinberg. He, um, great guy. He was our swim coach, but he was into endurance events and he got, um, uh, he got basically met up with this other guy named Joe DeSena, who's, uh, from New York, but, uh, lived in Vermont at the time, had a whole compound in Vermont, uh, founder of death race and Spartan race. And I just kind of got wrapped into it and, you know, I enjoyed, you know, running and it is a simple, like even now, right? Like when I go on vacation, I start every morning with a run. I can explore a whole city before my family or before my friends are even awake yet. And albeit I'm way slower than I was back then, but, um, but it's still enjoyable. It's, you know, getting out, getting the fresh air, getting the sunshine, uh, you know, to answer your question is like, I wanted to take a risk. Like this is a, this is a risk, like going to Vermont. I, I don't know, like very likely could have failed. Right. It's like, I had no idea what to expect. I've never, I had never been to Vermont. Um, I got in there at like three o'clock in the morning, showed up to this guy's house, Joe DeSena's house, super welcoming. Um, you know, uh, bought and sold big companies. So you're hanging out with guys like this, right? So it's like, you know, three o'clock in the morning, I show up to his house. He's awake. He was up. He was like, Hey, what do you want to, you want to help me, you know, fix up my barn? Like he had barns under construction that he like, he bought a barn in Maine or something and he had it transported to his compound in Vermont. And he was like reconstructing it. Um, I said, no, I don't. Cause I have a race tomorrow, but you know, maybe in two days, uh, you know, he saw me as like the college kid that I, he could get to help, uh, which was fun. Like you know, meeting all these different people, um, that's life for me. It's like, how do you, you know, meet new people that are interesting? Um, that transforms into like, what do I do now to meet these like health minded people? Right. It's, uh, this thing called high performance lifestyle training, HPLT. I go to, I've been to two of these different events. Um, this is also a game changer. Um, there are health focused, uh, wellness focused people, uh, founded by Brian Mazza. Um, but they're, you know, it's not a race. It's, it's more of like a small, you know, networking event. Um, if you're interested in health and wellness, if you want to be inspired, they have great speakers. Um, so I've gone to two of those in the last about year and a half. So that's kind of how I, I've more from ultra endurance events to more of that. Um, even though that kind of pushes you back into the ultra endurance events, but gotcha. So you're clearly a very driven person who does things with purpose. You like to push yourself. Mm -hmm. These are all traits that are very useful when it comes to the restaurant world. How did you get involved in the restaurant world before even untamed kitchen, maybe even before Pickleman's, if you want to go back that far, but what got you into this industry initially? Mm. Um, Yeah. So, From even in high school, I knew I wanted to be my own boss. Um, You know, if you look at my high school yearbook and it says, Alex Harrington, what do you want to do? There's a video, I think, actually, of me in high school, you know, kind of long, shaggy hair. And it says, 
something along the lines of like, oh, I'm going to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And when I got to college, I went to University of Iowa, an entrepreneurship program. I got involved with that. And there I found these, you know, professors, but they're really business people who sold their companies. And they were just, you know, teaching entrepreneurship classes at the University of Iowa. And from there, um, I saw these guys. I'd start hanging out with these guys. Like, we'd go out to lunch or, like, go get a, a, a drink or something um, after class or go hang out after class. And, you know, these guys were cool, right? Like, they're entrepreneurs. They sold businesses. And um, so my, my attitude went from becoming a Fortune 500 CEO to I have to start my own company and run my own company. Um, and it's about, like, you know, all the other things I did along the way is about finding the grit um, and determination and knowing that like, if you don't quit, you can win um, within your own, like maybe not win the race. Cause I never won a race, but like you can win at what you're doing. Like you can achieve your you can goals. Your goals yeah. You can achieve your goals if you don't quit. Um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the main thing I learned, but I knew from the beginning that, you know, being my own boss was the, was the answer and how to get into restaurants was, my older, my oldest brother, um, he got into restaurants first. He was a, he became the chief operating officer at Jimmy John's. Um, his name's Doug Stritzel. And, you know, so I, as a kid, I saw him working for Jimmy John's, um, you know, which didn't really have any effect on me cause I was like a high school kid. Um, so he was growing that business and then he ended up starting his own company called Pickleman's, um, you know, a couple of years before I graduated from college. And I was, as I was approaching graduation of college, I was, you know, wanted to be my own boss, didn't know what to do, trying to figure it out. So I got a job working for him. So I, you know, graduated from college, got a job working at a Pickleman sandwich shop in Columbia, Missouri, um, you know, making 28 grand a year of salary, um, working 50 to 70 to 80 hours a week plus, you know, minimum and trying to make these sandwich shops go. Right. So it's like, um, whether they're in Columbia, I drove around to the other markets cause we, we were opening other locations for other franchisees. Um, now it was just the corporate worker there to help. Um, so I was a delivery driver and doing all these things. Um, didn't feel like something that a college graduate should be doing at the time, but I knew that it would all work out. Right. And I just going to work harder than everyone else around me, figure it out. How do I get my own business? Um, then I helped open the Pickleman's in uh, downtown Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, went up there one time and decided to offer the owner an out. So I, I was 23 years old. I offered the owners of that Pickleman's in downtown Lincoln. Uh, I basically said, hey, I'll, I'll buy this place from you. Like, I'll, ta- I'll take it. Yeah. And... He said, yes. So I was like, all right, cool. This is great. I need to figure out how to get the money first. Like I didn't have any, I didn't have the money. I was, you know, less than a year out of college. Right. So that's what I did. I got, I rounded up some money. I got an SBA loan, you know, all the, you know, all the normal things. And, um, I had my own business in downtown Lincoln. That was it. That was it. that simple, right? wasn't going great. Like we barely made it. I didn't know how we were going to make payroll. Um, all the mistakes you can make, right? It's like, I thought I could be my own bookkeeper. Definitely cannot be my own bookkeeper. Not my skill set. I was trying to be a bookkeeper at midnight every night. Cause I was working, you know, 8am to, you know, 11pm or 8am to 3am every single day almost. So, um, but I knew very early on when I did that, I wanted to grow it. So we, I grew it as much as I could. And then I opened one in downtown Omaha we were kind of off to the races. We had a, you know, sales picked up, business picked up. It was all pretty good after that. And now you said you have eight of them, right? Yes. Yeah, I have eight Picklemans, and we um, we have five more in development. Um, so, yeah, we're looking to open five more in the Omaha, Lincoln type areas, right? Um, while we're also growing Untamed Kitchen, the goal for Untamed Kitchen is to grow um, one more this year, um, you know, and figuring out after that you know, maybe raising funds to, you know, open a bunch of these. The goal for Untamed Kitchen is to have 
an untamed kitchen in every, you know, community. So every community has a place that they can trust. They can go eat healthy food in a restaurant and they don't have to eat the healthy food only at home. Um, or, you know, go to one of the other places that has seed oils, the meat and the ingredients aren't as healthy. So untamed kitchen's goal is to open, you know, 50, a hundred of them or whatever have you. It's a lofty goal. Yeah. So you mentioned the idea of having a concept that was a little bit more health focused, but still delivered on the flavor that started percolating in your brain about five years ago. But when did it really start to, when did untamed kitchen really start to come into focus as of more of a fully, fully formed concept, excuse me. For sure. Uh, yeah, quite honestly, five years ago, I thought it was going to be a healthy burrito shop. Uh, I, was like, I, I really like burritos. You know, I could just make a burrito shop that's healthier. Um, but then I realized, you know, it's like burritos aren't, I love burritos. They're one of my favorite things, but they're not, that's not like, that's not what I should do. Like, that's not my real passion. Um, you know, I can't get behind, nah, I can get behind a burrito cause I love them, but I can't. <laughs> I can't open a burrito shop. And I was like, so what am I going to do? I'll have wraps. And our wraps are kind of like burritos. We've even thought about calling them burritos. Um, but, you know, I would say the last two years is really where, like, the menu really started to come together. We sampled the menu to different um, athletes, for example, like CrossFit athletes, like CrossFit Games athletes, like really focused, uh, you know, athletes um, got feedback you know, getting feedback from, from people can be challenging though. Um, you know, they, a lot of times people don't want to say something, you know, negative to your face. So you have to kind of figure out what, what it is that, you know, the biggest takeaways are, um, you know, I knew from the get go, like protein was one of the biggest takeaways, like for an athlete or for anybody, like getting enough protein on a daily basis is a really important, you know, health focused thing to do. Um, So that's why we have like healthy proteins, you know, that was a real big focus on that one for sure. So your first social media post was in June of 2022 for Untamed Kitchen. The restaurant didn't open until fall of 2023. I mean, this was not something that came together immediately. It was a process that took some time. Yeah. What, What was that like for you being so excited about this concept and yet, not, not rushing into it and just opening something because mm-hmm. I'm, I, I want to open it, but making mm-hmm. sure that everything is nailed down. What was that, that long process like? Painful and agonizing. It's like, <laughs> it was, it was challenging, right? So it's like, I like to run fast and break stuff. Like I want to run fast, make a bunch of decisions, have like people can pick up the pieces, like a lot of things like, you know, I might make 30 decisions a day. 10 of them are wrong, um, you know, but we'll just keep on going. We'll keep growing sales. We'll keep building things. And I like to build stuff, um, you know, business wise. Um, so yeah, it was like, it took way longer than expected. Anytime you're going to open a restaurant or any business, it takes, it can take way longer. Like the build out took longer. Uh, every step of the way for untamed kitchen took longer. It was like, we had the spot, the spot, the location area was delayed. Um, it was being, a, it was a renovated building. It was an old building and needed tons of work. It was way behind schedule, you know, um, which it all makes sense. It's like you take a really old building, you open up a wall on a building that was built in the 1800s and it was a nightmare. So like, Oh, we had to, Oh, we have to rebuild that. Okay. That's, that's not good. Um, so everything about it was, a challenge. It was, like I said, I like to run fast and break stuff. So it's like, you know, every, like, how should everything look? I'm not an interior designer. Like I have an idea, but I don't know if that's like the right thing. I I don't pretend to be the smartest guy in the room. So like, I like to surround myself with people that know more stuff than I do. Um, you know, put, how do we put the right people in the right room in the same room? So it's like, building out the brand. How do you build out a, you know, brand? I, I called secret penguin and I'm like, I need to help with building the brand. Um, so they helped a lot with that. Um, you know, finding the right architect, finding, 
uh, the right construction company, finding the right team, finding the right, you know, putting all the pieces together. It took a long time. And then, yeah, we just had to basically wait and wait and wait. It felt like a lot of waiting. So, but like I said, painful and agonizing. But at the same time, exciting. We have to just keep the excitement going. How do you keep the excitement from, you know, oh, I'm going to start this really cool place to like two years later, you actually have the place. It's, um, you know, you never get what you, like nothing's overnight, right? There's no overnight success. Like very rarely, you never have an overnight success. It might look like it on paper. Like you might, it might look like, oh, they opened this place. Wow, it's really successful. No, it's been years in the making, you know, you know, tons of money. Like everything's over budget, over like everything's, more than you would ever expect. Um, and I built Untamed Kitchen to be a household brand, right? Like, I want to have 100 locations. I wanted to build it from the get, from the first one ever, to be something that could be rep, uh, repeatable. And um, how can we build 100 of them? We have to start with the, building the first one right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, you know, we went over every single thing as much as we could. So a lot of waiting, a lot of frustration, yeah. but that all comes to fruition on October 23rd of 2023. Yeah. That is your first day open. Mm-hmm. What do you remember most about that day? When I bring up that date, what memories ping to the pop to the top of your brain? Um, yeah, that was my uh, ninth restaurant I've ever opened. The first untamed kitchen, the first one I've, you know, that's ever been solely mine, my creation. Right. So, um, it's like the night before a marathon. It's like the night before their first day of school. All these types of deals, right? Night, you know, you don't really know what to expect. You don't know what it's going to be like. We're going to have a line out the door. Is, are we going to have nobody show up? You have no idea. Like, is, are we going to be able to cook the things the right way? Is everything going to work? Um, it was a, you know, we wanted to get it open so bad that, like, at that point, like we had some things that weren't hundred percent done yet. We still have things that aren't hundred percent completed, uh, within our space, but it's just like a dash to the finish line kind of deal. It's like, you're nervous, you're excited. You don't know what to expect. You just have to open the door and rip the bandaid off and, and give it a go. Um, and I'd say it went great. Like, you know, um, we didn't do as much publicity as we, originally had planned probably because we didn't know exactly how it was going to go. We've made all these things. Some of it we've done in the commercial kitchen. A lot of it we hadn't yet. Um, you know, maybe a couple days before. Um, but with anything, it's just like at some point you have to just jump in. You just have to jump in the water, see if you can swim. Hopefully you can. Maybe the water's really cold. It's like, but as long as you're focused and determined, you can make it back. So um, that's what we did. We opened in October. We were supposed to open in May of last year. Um, that was what we were shooting for, where we were going to be open, College World Series, you know, Omaha summer. We opened in October, and we had, you know, three cold months. And it wasn't exactly what we wanted. You know, I think, you know, now these last this last month, you know, here April, um, April, May, um, you know, has been – business has been going, you know, tremendously, you know, through the roof. Like we're, we're beating expectations, um, from, from where we uh, started and yeah, we're just taking it. Like I said, we're just building it one bowl at a time. Uh, You mentioned before this initial location even opened, you have this goal to make 50 of these, to make a hundred of these, to have this thing expand across the nation. Mm -hmm. What's in your mind, What's the benefit of creating something with the goal of it being repeatable, being uh, replicable, Yeah. as opposed to just opening the first location, saying, let's see if this works, and then maybe we think about expansion. You came into this with the goal of expansion in mind. Why? Right. Um, really, it's about building as big of community as we can. Um, you know, one location can build a great community. Our goal is to have two or three locations in Omaha at least. Um, you have to, for a restaurant, 
people will drive out of the way to go to a restaurant, right? But convenience is a big factor, um, especially when it's, you know, people are busy. They work every day. They need, if they're going to go get lunch, it's, it needs to be pretty convenient. So um, the goal is to build it, to build a bit, the, as big as community as we can possibly get. You know, one location in downtown Omaha, it has, like, we have a great little community so far. Um, and our community is building, but not as big as if we have one in Elkhorn and one at, you know, in the middle of Omaha and one in Lincoln and one in Denver. So when people are traveling or people are, you know, in different communities that live there, they say, they see untamed kitchen and they're, Oh, that's, that's a place that we can believe in. That's a place that we can trust. They're doing the right things. They're living by their principles. Um, they have actual real ingredients and real food. Um, so that, that's the biggest thing. Like I said, from the you know beginning, I wanted to build a place that I wanted to eat at every day. I could drive from one side of the town to the other and not find it, not find the healthy place. I like eating at Pickleman's, for example, but um, I think they have a lot of really great options. Um, you know, it's, it's a great brand as well. Um, but as far as building the health community that I was looking for, I created Untamed Kitchen for that. Well, you, you've done it, Alex, and you've built something that is really cool. And I remember seeing those first social media posts back in the summer of 2022, and I was I was hyped. Yeah. I was excited. I yeah. was like, I can't wait for this thing. But there was that part in the back of my brain that was just like, is this place going to be able to deliver Sure. Like I've I've had this promise before that this food is going to be healthy, but it's also going to, going to be delicious. Yeah. And one of those two has fallen. Yeah. And I'm very happy to say that Untamed Kitchen does not drop the either of those balls. Uh, yeah. it, it, it keeps them both juggling. Yeah. It, it's really impressive what you've been able to build. And, and people, I highly encourage you go check this place out. Whether you're on a on a health journey or if you just want to have a delicious meal like yeah. go and get the fried rice bowl get the um the the barbecue bowl the gq bowl is very yeah. good get the blt salad in a wrap that's what yeah. i got last time i came down it was fantastic and i finished the whole thing and i felt like i could go back to work and have a productive day i could go for a run if i mm-hmm. wanted to like i didn't feel weighed down and heavy it was just really delicious yeah clean food you've created something yeah. awesome you mentioned how busy you are you've got nine restaurants now yeah. like and you gave an hour of your time to come into this podcast yeah. today thanks so much for having me no thank you for coming on the show it, it means a lot alex mm-hmm. i really appreciate you yeah appreciate it thanks so much omaha as always thanks for eating with us